I'm Carly Lawrence. For anybody that um, is unfamiliar with the folks on the screen, I'm the deputy city manager, and I'm here with Steve Glick, who is um, assisting with this project as well. And so we're here as the staff on the project, and we're going to um, be here to help answer questions at the end and um, listen to input. And before all of that, we're going to kick it off to our consultants, MIG, and we have Mark and Jay both here, and they're going to give a short presentation on the project so far and what our current plan is, and then open it up for feedback and thoughts from everyone on this meeting. So this is just the beginning of this year's kind of kickoff of the Heart of Golden, and we're super excited to have you here. And I will turn it over to Mark. Great. Mark, do you want to introduce yourself and then we can start the presentation? Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Carly. So my name is Mark Delatore. I am the project manager for the consultant team for the Heart of Golden project. We're joined by BRS Architects um, uh, as well as a subconsultant group. Uh, Jay? Yeah, uh, Jay Rankins, principal with MIG, um, principal in charge on this project. Um, and uh, yeah, really excited to be re-engaging with everyone on this one. Awesome, thanks so much. And it looks like Emily, if I can get a uh, share options. Oh, uh, I, you should be able to do that, but let me um, uh, just set you up with that. All right. So as we're sorting that out, um, one thing that I can um, kind of throw out there to tee things up, uh, Mark and I were sort of reflecting back on the process and uh, the community conversation, I think, actually started two and a half years ago, approximately, almost two and a half years ago. Um, it's one of those, uh, maybe one of the, maybe there's too many examples of this today, but, you know, kind of that time warp effect of uh, the pandemic. Uh, but the uh, we were engaged in December uh, kind of a, a 2019 officially kicked things off in 2020 and had some really great momentum going into the spring of 2020 uh, when obviously uh, COVID uh, struck um, a lot of other events. And so we did make some progress uh, throughout 2020, uh, albeit, you know, a little different than what had originally been planned um, and then have really uh, been able to sort of uh, reinvigorate things uh, of late. Uh, through a series of mechanisms that Mark will talk about, um, and then uh, want to kind of open the community conversation again, uh, beginning with this evening. So uh, Mark is going to give us uh, a presentation, and then we're going to do some Mentimeter polling. Um, we'll explain that when we get there, um, and then uh, open it up for any clarification questions at the end. Mark? Th thanks, Jay. As good points of reference for you know what the pandemic did and planning terms. When we started this project, I had one kid and I'm up to three now. So a, a lot has changed over these past years, but we're really excited to, as Jay mentioned, start the conversation again, revisit a lot of the community conversations that got this ball rolling in the first place and talk through how the process has been refined over the past couple of years. So to start, we wanted to kind of go through where we've been in this process, and it, and it really began with community based feedback workshops and that there were additional engagement opportunities that carried on well into the pandemic with online engagement, walking tours and things of that nature. It started with a series of workshops that uh, began, as Jay mentioned, at the very end of 2019, carried into early 2020, uh, with really conversations with the community about what this corridor, what this area within Golden um, currently serves for the community and what it could serve moving forward. So we thought through not just the types of uses, but the feeling of spaces and that visioning conversation really led us to a few really distinct conclusions from what we heard from the community. And it was focused on, hey, this is an amazing open space asset for, for Golden, and it can be even more so if we design it intentionally. We know that flexibility is really important from not just a building standpoint, but an open space standpoint uh, in terms of being able to adapt to the various needs that the community has, not just today, but might have moving forward into the future. And thinking about um, what started the project, and that was the acquisition of the old Coors office building, and land assets are really important when we think about potential change for the community. And the development criteria focused on built environment, sustainability, and mobility, and the community helped us use those metrics to vet the process moving forward when we started thinking about different concepts and different approaches. So still, this right here, I think, was the very last in-person public meeting in the state of Colorado. I don't know if it was that grand, maybe the city of Golden at the very least, 
um, into March when we started thinking about what types of concepts um, made sense with what we've been hearing from a visioning standpoint. And we looked at uh, all sorts of different aspects there. You can see the, you know, the, the hard-eyed emojis. You can see the very, very sad emojis based on certain concepts we were looking at. And we uh, used precedent imagery to help think through, well, when we talk about mobility or when we talk about open space, what does that mean? You can see the 100 acre wood and I think Fred Flintstone in one of those photos. So a lot of innovative thinking as it relates to transportation, the types of open space that support the community. We took those same activities online, knowing that one event at one point in time isn't going to reach everyone. And we wanted to make sure that we were casting a wide as net as possible to make sure that all aspects and all sectors of the community could provide input. So looking at those different approaches to the, the concepts at the time, we really got to a kind of a, a simplified version uh, in that process of at its core, develop out east, out towards the new property acquisition, but to the degree that we can, preserve as much space in the center of the property as, or the center of the corridor uh, as possible for, for use by the community, for use by the neighbors, for use by um, you know, those, those visiting Golden. And those types of spaces that supported the built environment were really focused on, you know, passive movement and, and, you know, and gathering in certain areas. And there's amphitheaters and, and plazas and different types of things that say would support development, but we're very much focused on, you know, what the community needs uh, have been identified through the process. Knowing that we are still in the, you know, the, the, the thick of the pandemic, we wanted to make sure not to lose the great conversation and momentum that we had with community members and the conversations that led to what was getting to be a pretty great, great concept in terms of an approach, right? Focusing that development to the east and opening up that, that center space. So we actually set up for a walking tour along the Creek Creek Corridor, had four stations, various activity boards kind of along that corridor so that we could continue to have that conversation about specific elements, about kind of the larger picture to understand and to make sure that as we move through the process from a technical standpoint, working with emergency services and other staff departments, we're doing so still in line with the community vision of course, back online, that was a big piece of how we engaged through the pandemic and through a, a kind of a design your corridor that looked at, gosh, dozens of different potential variations of how that might look. We really got affirmation of, yes, we said it once before, we'll say it again, develop out east and make sure to the degree that we can preserve as much of that central zone for, for, the, for culture, for, for open space, for things that really support um, the, the neighbors and the, the, the users of Golden. So that got us to kind of preferred concept plans. And I'm going to touch on these briefly before transitioning to where we're at today, which is what we're really here to, to focus on. That was a little bit of a, what have y'all been up to for the past year and a half? So hopefully that summary was was helpful and not uh, too quick, but there was a lot that obviously happened over the, the past couple of years. That conversation um, that, you know, carried into the walking tour and the online engagement really resulted in two different um, plan approaches. One that focused on uh, a more formal central zone, with the civic campus to the east, and a second that really focused on pushing everything that we possibly could to the to the eastern end, but and preserving all that space in the middle where really only the visitor center remained. And through conversations with both the community and and with emergency services and other uh, individuals, there is some kind of practicality things that we ran into with with that particular approach. But the tenets of it were still equally important. So knowing that that east end was going to unlock how we could consider change in this particular area, we went through countless iterations of what that might look like. And the conversation evolved over time, as as y'all as y'all know, um, uh, with the evolving cultural conversation and different parts of Golden, um, with players that were at the at the table for, for consideration of larger cultural facilities, which the community brought to us through that process, what we actually could program and consider for that East End certainly evolved in in you know the, the recent recent months here. So that then brings us to where we are today, which is, again, the important part of what we wanted to talk to you all about. And it's what are the consistent program elements that we've heard through that process? How does that you know, physically manifest itself on a site? What's that concept look like? And when we think down to its very core, those consistent design and program elements, there are a few things that are, are, are throughout, I'd say, the, the full kind of heart of Golden Project area. And that's noting that there's a cultural focus to that central zone on both sides of the creek and that that's through open space, that's through the types of uses that support more passive open space, that public art and open space as a as a central theme is present throughout. And that um, as we move around, not not within our vehicles, but as, as pedestrians, uh, we're thinking about the, the pathways, not just 
and the you know the width of those, but maybe in the increased capacity of them, whether it's additional pathways and, and what have you. On the west zone, um, consideration for potentially connecting to uh, eighth to the community center, either through, through a bike or a pad or something of that nature. Um, thinking about um, bus connection for the community center as well, as well as expanded parking on that eastern or that western end to really accommodate kind of use specific needs to 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 move certain kind of pinch points from a parking standpoint off of major parts of the corridor. In the central zone, I know the museum has been relocated across the, leak, the creek in the concept. The library has moved westward to align with the Illinois Street Ped Bridge and is supported by more formalized open spaces. And then the fire station, and this is in part due to uh, service needs and emergency access. It remains in its current location, but it does expand its footprint, knowing that it's present within an area that's been identified as culturally significant for the community and open space being part of that. The larger footprint really is intended to accommodate a more um, public facing side of, of what's traditionally a very you know pragmatic emergency uh, service use. And that east zone, looking at City Hall and the police station, relocating east of Archer Street. That, Eastern zone south of 10th, uh, accommodating um, uh, more uh, open space elements that are formal. So amphitheater gardens, things of that nature, and then connecting water streets across um, across um, from Vanover to connect with with Archer. So at a high level, and I'll, I'll, I'll zoom into these areas in a little more detail, but at a high level, you'll see that new library here on access with the Illinois Street Ped Bridge, the fire department in its current location both flanking what's kind of seen as a more of a festival street or a programmable kind of linear plaza um, centralized with a, a pavilion and open space around it. And on that eastern zone, you can see a combined city hall and police footprint that's supported by a structured parking facility that is tied to uh, event plaza, larger amphitheater, again, to the east end outside of the, the core where most of the activity occurs today, preserving partnership opportunities for a second phase. Zooming into the site a little bit more specifically in that central zone, you see that in greater detail here, uh, still at a at a you know ten thousand foot level, but uh, a, a festival street or promenade really kind of running through the center of the space to build off of diagonal parking um, that's be adjacent to Tenth uh, Street and parallel to uh, that open space intended to be programmable, knowing that you know obviously with Parfit Park being um, very well programmed, uh, there a uh, need for other kind of um, overflow opportunities. And then you can see a more formalized southern connection along Parfit Park, moving along to, to Water Street as it moves eastward. Moving down to the east zone, some of the key elements here, these uh, additional phase two kind of partnership opportunities and the properties here north of 10th Street, a multi-use parking garage that could serve a number of functions outside of the needs of you know, two particular buildings, such as City Hall and Police, but potentially um, uh, tied to transit of some sort. And then you'll see the combined uh, city hall and police in a, in a larger facility to preserve um, some of that land for future, again, partnership considerations. There are other program elements that are also important to consider that haven't been identified on this particular illustrative plan, but can certainly be integrated. There's there's space for it. There's um, There's been identified uh, interest in it through a community conversation so far. And tonight, we certainly don't have to determine yes, we need an ice skating rink or no, we don't, knowing that we can have those conversations moving forward and there's certainly room in the program and plan to accommodate these. So um, on the transportation side, thinking really specifically about the types of trails, the amenity side, thinking about active recreation, uh, ice skating rink, playgrounds, things of that nature, um, thinking about very strategic retail to support the area, whether it's a, a beer garden, a tap room. That was a, a fan favorite. Beer garden and tap room rose to the top a number of times in what we heard from the community. Uh, and then creek management infrastructure, thinking really intentionally, not just about identifying areas for parking, but where folks can you know, enter and exit the creek and you know, what that does for our trail system. When we look forward you know, to this next phase of getting through some of these you know, priority elements here, there are certainly other partnership opportunities, and you saw the plan accommodates consideration for those on the east end that could include uh, you know, other future public uses or even um, housing, which was uh, a consistent uh, theme through a lot of our conversation with the community, uh, other neighborhoods serving commercial uses uh, and employment, also obviously being adjacent to the, the one day future um, RTD extension, uh, future transit supportive uses. So we wanna make sure that we're, we're thinking not just near term needs, but uh, out five, 10, 20 years as we, as we move forward. In terms of next steps, 
Hey, Mark, on the, on the last slide, can you just yeah, sure. um, maybe clarify where you were talking about for those? Yes, yeah, certainly. Been tracking along. So here on that eastern end down here on 10th Street, east of Ford, east of Archer, this kind of collection of parcels that have been identified for phase two kind of partnership opportunities. And in these areas here adjacent to what would be a civic development kind of south of 10th Street, these are the types of uses that have been identified as potential kind of supportive uses in that area. And that's not to say that that list is final either. It was certainly going to be part of the conversation to come. So I'm going to actually, before we go on to the next steps, we can save that for the last part of the presentation. I'm going to, to pause there and transition over to the activity. So as Jay mentioned, uh, we'll be using a program called Mentimeter, and he can explain a little bit more about that now. Sure. Um, so yeah, as Mark is transitioning his screen, um, if you can, uh, the best way to do this is typically on a phone or on a tablet. Um, and you navigate to www.menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Um, it's up on the top of the screen there. Um, and uh, and then there's a code that you enter, uh, which is also on the top of the screen. It's 89542212. Um, you can also, if you don't have a phone handy or a tablet, um, or not you know, used to kind of navigating on the web there, or maybe have an old school phone, um, doesn't have that, you can open a, a browser window and do the same thing. Um, open Firefox, Google, you know, whatever you want to do, uh, Chrome. Uh, so it's www.menti.com, M-E-N-T-I, and then enter the code 89542212. I think we have, I think I was looking at the list of attendees. Uh, there's one or two that are doubled up, so we probably have like 31 or 32 folks. Uh, so hopefully we can get at least you know 15 or 20 people on here and uh, thank you emily for putting the link in the chat and the code perfect um so so far we have five people this is just our a little tester here um what is your favorite golden event uh, so we have goldens and golden autumn fest movies and music in the park greener golden or something else all together um, and it might be fun if if you do have a suggestions of something else you could put them in the chat too And again, this is just to make give everyone time to kind of navigate to this platform. You just stay on there. Uh, when Mark advances, it'll advance the question on whatever mechanism you're using, whether that be your uh, computer browser, to your tablet, or your phone. Uh, so we'll give it another maybe 30, 40 seconds, see if we get a few more people. Um, and then interestingly, on this question that is just for fun, uh, it seems like something else is winning. Uh, movies and music in the park are pretty popular. Uh, and Beth said candlelight walk is her favorite. Or a favorite, sorry. Green or Golden has a little bit of support. Golden's and Golden, one person. And no one thinks that Autumn Fest is their favorite event. In I'm sure people like going, but it's not their favorite. <laughs> Concerts in the park more generally. Great. OK, so we have 27 people of our 31 attendees. That's uh, usually about right. If anyone still wants to get on there, you absolutely can. You can jump in at any time. Um, so if we want to advance to the first uh, substantive question. So what aspects of the preferred concept do you like most? Um, and uh, Mark, if you don't mind, maybe switching back to the actual. There you go. Perfect. Wow, you're good at this. <laughs> um, so a little bit of review here again um, yeah, as Mark is zooming in. Uh, really trying to keep that large open space concept um, in the kind of central portion of the corridor, uh, really sort of anchored between the fire department uh, with an expanded kind of outdoor space with ideally some outdoor exhibitry, uh, perhaps. We've actually heard that the fire department has some kind of, I don't know what you want to call them, relics um, that um, may be able to be put on display indoors and outdoors. Um, the library anchoring the west end and then the museum um, kind of pulling that to the south side of the creek as well. And that being related to, you know, Miner's Alley um, relocating along 11th. 
and Arapaho, um, some of the other uh, cultural amenities uh, in downtown. Um, and then looking at uh, more distributed parking, um, some flexible event space, um, connections through Parfit Park. Um, then we scroll to the east, um, continuing that connection um, over to Vanover Park, uh, really thinking about how that relates to an improved open space east of Vanover Park. Um, the amphitheater, as Mark pointed out, got a lot of support uh, throughout the discussion, particularly in an area that isn't immediately adjacent to neighbors. Um, so this seemed like a really great location uh, in conjunction with a uh, some form some form of gardens um, along this eastern part of the creek, the event plaza, and then as we said, the city hall and police space, which would also have some community space integrated into it as well. Uh, so meeting space and and things like that. Um, and then, of course, those partnership opportunities that Mark had pointed out north of there. So um, if we go back to the Mentimeter now, hopefully that gives everyone a little review, give you a chance to look at the concept again. Uh, so some of the aspects that people like the most, reserving the East End for phase two. Uh, so really kind of being um, good stewards of the land, um, kind of being efficient with that and creating some additional community opportunities. Um, because there admittedly are other needs beyond just open space and civic uses. Uh, amphitheater and sculpture garden, um, another one for amphitheater and all the cultural offerings. Um, moving the water sports parking, uh, museum and history park, uh, someone identified. Uh, someone else said history museum on the other side of the creek, so people are liking that. Um, consolidating the city services, uh, yeah, it would be great if we didn't have to go to all, so many different places. Um, love the changes on the eastern side, especially the police and city hall, as well as the parking. Uh, I'm trying to hit highlights here. Um, new library with significantly more space um, and the open space and green spaces. Uh, but making it compact and partnering options are flexible, like that would prove like that and would prefer even a taller parking garage over surface lots. Um, so, yeah, maybe exploring additional structured parking. Right now, there's just the one structure that we're showing on the east end. Um, open space is good. Amphitheater is also a great addition. More parking, larger library, more outdoor gathering space, phase two land. So, generally, some of these bigger moves, it seems like people are liking. Um, love having a cultural home in Golden. Awesome. These are great. Um, more natural and less Disney-like. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I, uh, hopefully that's starting to kind of come through in the, the renderings or the illustrative um, site plan. Um, but that is definitely something that we heard um, is, you know, don't make this sort of artificially um, something that it's not. You know, really embrace it as a, a natural creek corridor, um, but look at how then we can embed these civic uses and um, sculptures and public art and all these different elements, the relics as I maybe uh, mischaracterize them um, into those open spaces. All right, um, I think that, and we'll be collecting all these um, obviously, um, but their next one is what aspects of the preferred concept do you think need improvement? So um, we acknowledge that, you know, this, something like this is never perfect and, you know, kind of the first First try, or I don't know, maybe this is our 17th try mark, but um, <laughs> first try again, um, you know, kind of rolling this back out. Um, so if there's things that you think could use improvement, tweaks you would make, things you think are missing, um, we'd love to hear that. Um, we're going to obviously continue the conversation, and Mark will speak to this a little later. Um, there's going to be an opportunity next week for folks uh, to engage in person, actually, and then we'll um, obviously, have a guiding golden companion uh, beginning tomorrow too. So, um, so this will just be the start of that conversation of how to make this uh, concept that seems to have some pretty strong support based on the last question. How to make it even better? Um, anything that you want to point out, Mark, that I didn't when the first kind of review? Did I miss anything? No, I think that was that was a pretty good summary, and it was it was great to see that. Um, those responding to the question or you know, identifying some of the benefits that we hadn't even articulated, right? The museum's relationship now with um, with with miners, uh, pulling some of that cultural identity to the, to the south of the creek. And um, no, I think that was that was, that was great. OK, great. 
Awesome. So a little review for you here of the site plan, just to kind of jog your memory if there's anything that you think could use improvement. And then if we want to switch back over to the Mentimeter results. So price tag, great one. <laughs> Implementation is key. Um, obviously, this uh, is not something that would be built overnight, but um, there's a large public cost to this. Um, so that would be once we kind of refine this based on the community feedback and get a general buy off on the direction, um, that'll be a component is uh, looking at uh, phasing uh, costs, um, potential funding sources. Uh, you know, it would be a large cost to the city and the taxpayers in the city, but there may be additional funding sources that we can tap into as well. Um, someone said more parking. Um, so I'd like to see more parking incorporated somehow. Uh, more details. What does more cultural offerings mean? Um, I don't know if Mark, you want to speak to that at all. Yes, no, maybe. Sorry, you muted. No, yeah, sorry about that. Was the mute buttons in different places on all these things. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And you know, through our prior engagement, uh, it meant a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, some folks, when they thought about cultural offerings, it was a distributed public art program, right? It was thinking about different spots within the community. They either wanted to see gold being celebrated in a, in a physical way. Others were about you know communal spaces within a building that you know performing artists could work next to nonprofit artists and, and what have you. So we don't have, I think, a, a fine to uh, a fine. Uh, there's a colloquialism I'm missing here, but we don't have that probably that detail that's being articulated here, but it's certainly something that we'd want to hear from y'all as to what those important pieces are, that knowing that there are things happening outside of this project, such as um, the, you know, um, uh, Miners Alley Playhouse expansion into Myers and, and things that, you know, are, are influencing when we think about our, our, the space around around this area. We want to make sure we're taking into consideration when we're thinking about uh, location of these different types of uses. Great. Thanks, Mark. Um, someone said that they love the. Oh, did someone have something? Sorry. Thought I heard something. Um, someone said that they love the library, but they're curious about the cost associated with. Move, well, I'm assuming logic, they said, um, to spend a lot to move it 100 feet. Will it be larger? Um, so we have been coordinating with the county um, on that process. Um, they're interested in a new facility. Um, but it, it's worth you know exploring further. Um, I think that's a good point. Is there an ability to reuse a portion of the existing facility? Maybe. Um, someone said a nice way to keep the open land on east side until they are used. That's a great point. Um, land banking. Um, you know, are they just gravel lots, or is there you know a good way to use those that are kind of you know uh, aesthetically pleasing and maybe contributing to the community in some way until there would be development on those. Um, if in fact there would be development, um, concerned about the cost, time frame, who has provided input, which neighborhoods, etc. What about affordable housing? Um, all great comments. Um, the input piece, we do have some input summaries uh, that are available. I think on the guiding golden site, um, but we can make sure we have those available next week too, and maybe incorporate a little bit more into a presentation next week. Um, where is the tennis area going? Uh, Mark, do you want to speak to some of the ideas that we thought about around that? Yeah, certainly. And knowing that um, one of those kind of additional program elements where the concept can certainly incorporate that moving forward is something that we've heard kind of both sides of the coin on. Of Yes, it's a, a, a dire need in this area uh, or a dire need for Golden or a need that can be relocated within Golden in coordination with Parks and Recreation. That's been an ongoing conversation. So in this particular iteration, we're not showing a tennis court or a pickleball court, which has also come up in those conversations. That's not to say it can't be reincorporated here or as part of a larger kind of recreation conversation moving forward. So th great questions on this. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Someone asked where the farmer's market would go. I think we were imagining that it would happen in the uh, kind of that flexible space that's parking as well as a large promenade connecting the fire department and the library. Uh, but there's actually quite a few options uh, for the market as well as other events. Um, some of those surface parking lots could be used that way. Water Street could be potentially used for uh, events um, as well as the event plaza adjacent to City Hall and combined police facility. So um, when we did the walking tour, I think there was actually three different events going on. 
Um, so it's not uncommon in Golden to have uh, quite a few things happening at once. And so we wanted to create a lot of different spaces for events and festivals um, and make sure that those were connected to each other. Um, another question about the movement of the library. Um, any thoughts about shuttles from the new parking garage instead of the water park parking? Uh, yes, and I think uh, maybe Steve and uh, Carly can speak to that a little bit when we're done with the Mentimeter. Uh, some of the kind of next step studies that will be looked at, uh, but a shuttle and thinking about uh, how we're moving people around, not just for tubing and water sports, but other um, aspects of getting up and down the corridor as well as connecting to downtown are definitely part of the mix. Um, someone said, oh, where's a ditto about where's the farmer's market? Um, someone said no need for another beer garden. <laughs> um, and then the amphitheater should be, what is that down at the bottom, Mark? Are you able to see? Designed to reduce noise impacts. Yeah, so the orientation of that, the way that it would be designed, kind of built into the hill. Um, that's part of the reason that we were locating where it is. But yeah, there's still more to think through on that. Um, someone, I think, up at the top had said they wanted some more information about the um, central area generally. Um, and it seemed like there was some understanding that that would come in a more refined uh, design uh, effort. Um, we can, yeah, we can take it a bit further in the work that we're doing. Um, and then, yes, there would absolutely be more detailed design for each and every piece of the corridor. And so um, that would be uh, something that could get refined further moving forward. Um, having the amphitheater downstream is better for noise control um, as residences along the creek. Oh, in residences along the creek, especially given the noise ordinance. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll look at the, those different noise implications. Um, how will the Queer uh, Tech development impact this project uh, was another question. Uh, we've been coordinating with the development team around Coors Tech um, as well um, and making sure that these are complementary. I think that's probably the most important piece and then thinking about connectivity as well. Um, so those the projects are being synced up and we're making sure that there's not sort of unnecessary overlap, you know, in the programs of the two. Um, but so far, so good there. Um, Sorry, Carly, were you going to speak or someone? Oh, uh, yes, Jay and Mark, I just got a question in the chat um, about uh, if the history park will remain. Yes, yeah, yes. The intent is that the history park remains and maybe even has see some improvements with the addition of the museum adjacent in this concept. Regarding the concept or the questions at the library, it's, it's a great question about, you know, a, a little kind of geographic shift there. I think part of it is, and Please, Carly or Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. Its current building was not intended for a library to begin with. Is that correct? I see Steve unmuting. Yes, and I guess I'm I'm wondering. Um, there are representatives of the library here who can also speak to it. But um, the building that the library is in actually was the old rec center, and it actually was not much of a rec center. It was like a gym with a wooden floor for roller skating on. Um, and so they are in need of a much larger facility to meet the current needs and the future needs in the community. So it is much more about building a facility that will meet the future needs of the community than, um, than the location. By moving it into a new location, if you're going to build something to meet our future needs, it allows the existing library to function while a new one is built. But the the library representatives will also be at the in-person meeting next week and could, if they don't end up speaking to it tonight, they could speak to it next week. All right. Thank you, Steve. Um, I saw there was another comment about the location, the amphitheater and its proximity to three homes that are located there. Um, so definitely something we'll uh, continue to look at. Um, can tennis courts again? Okay, I think we're we've hit kind of the main pieces there. Emily, I saw that Robert has his hand up. Is there a way to call on him or let him unmute something like that? Um, I. Uh sent a note to Robert. I'm going to bring everyone in for our discussion um, okay. at the end of our Mentimeter exercise. But Robert, if you have a question, just 
chat it to me and we can um, ask Jay and, and Mark and, and we can also address it um, a little bit later on. Yeah, and I think Mark, is this just for clarity, this is the last question on the Mentimeter? We have two questions, both of a similar format, but a quick prioritization based on uh, those uh, program elements that we listed in the presentation that we'd heard from the community through the process so far. As uh, again, these being elements that can easily be added in the existing concept, if that's something that is are deemed appropriate, and that's not a decision we necessarily need to make right now to identify where they are, or how many there are, but trying for to understand, you know, from a priority standpoint, are there certain elements that have been identified program pieces that, yeah, we should definitely continue the conversation moving forward on. So that's this particular question right here. We'll have a similar one for those phase two partnership opportunities. And then I promise we'll shut up and <laughs> we can open it to uh, larger questions. Great. Yeah, so this one, you should be able to kind of drag um, these up and down to prioritize and then you hit submit. Um, so we have Looks like accessible playground and single track tails. Oh, <laughs> uh, trails, that should be. Although a single track tail sounds kind of interesting too. Um, active recreation is popping up as well. Uh, tennis, pickleball. Um, still, yeah, definitely seeing support for all the different components. Um, additional community gardens. See, uh, formal entry exit for water sports so that people aren't just kind of doing that willy nilly everywhere. A um, little lower on the list, as although, as I said, there's still a little bit of support there is ice slash roller skating rink um, starting to climb a little bit. Beer garden and our tap room is down towards the bottom, uh, along with permanent kiosk for vendors. So it looks like this is. Generally shaking out with some consistency now. Uh, so we have 19 people. I think we had 44 on the last question. So we'll give it another 30 seconds, 40 seconds, see if a few other people want to chime in. And Jay and Mark, can you clarify what you mean by an accessible playground? Yeah, so it's, it's referring to ADA accessibility, so universal design. So it accommodates um, all different ability levels and typically a, a variety of age ranges as well. And that's not to imply that other playgrounds don't have accessible components to them, but it would be more of an intentional larger scale focused on, on that for the entirety of, of the playground, identifying an accessible playground as opposed to a nature play or something. It's a category. That's... Yeah, and the intent is that it's an, an inclusive playground, right? So it's, it's meant for everybody. Um, and really, um, the ones that we've been involved in um, tend to be some some of the most popular uh, amongst all you know ability levels um, and destinations, honestly, for kind of people from around the community. All right, so we'll I think we'll I'll sum it up and we'll switch to the next one. So active recreation is kind of emerging to the top amongst this group of 24 respondents, formal entry, exit for water sports, accessible playground, ice roller skating rink, single track trails, um, ended up getting bumped down a little bit um, as more people responded. Um, and then we have additional community gardens, permanent kiosks for vendors, and beer garden or tap room at the bottom. And our last question. Of the phase two partnership opportunities, so again, those would be those opportunities on kind of the north side of 10th on the east end of the corridor, uh, which would you prioritize? And th these will be future conversations, of course, uh, with council, with staff, with the community. Um, but uh, we wanted to see if there were certain things that were kind of rising to the top as this was a brainstorm list coming out of prior community conversations. Um, so those included, again, visitor creek corridor management facilities, um, oh, this is going to be tough. They're going to jump around on me. Future public uses, future transit supportive uses, residential units, um, which could include affordable housing. Um, there was the uh, suggestion for improvement um, around affordable housing, so that could be workforce housing, market rate, of, um, or affordable. Land banking, which would mean we're just kind of just kind of saving it for later. Maybe there's 
additional city needs later. Um, maybe it's um, the city needs, I don't know, financial revenue later. And so they sell it, you know, with a, some sort of direction on what could happen there. Um, neighborhood commercial uses. Um, so those would be kind of smaller scale uh, retail or services typically could be professional uses, but uh, really kind of catering to the, you know, people nearby um, that could walk there, bike there um, versus, you know, kind of a, a bigger commercial destination and then employment uses down at the bottom there. So we're seeing the future transit supportive uses pop up. Um, makes a lot of sense with the proximity to what will hopefully be a, a station at some point uh, connecting uh, Golden uh, eastward. Um, future public uses um, has a lot of support as well. Residential units, this idea of a visitor creek quarter management facility. It's kind of middle of the road. And then lower on our list is neighborhood commercial uses, employment uses, and land banking. So I think we have 24 on the last question, so we'll give it a, just a little bit longer. Oh. We might have topped it out at 21, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so I, I think that generally tracks with what I just ran through in terms of the order. So transit supportive uses, future public uses, residential, um, kind of being our top three. Um, and with that being our last question, we can leave that one open um, in case anyone wants to pop in there still. Um, but with that, I think we're ready to open it up to kind of clarifying questions, um, comments that people want to make. Um, and myself, Mark, Carly, and Steve are all available um, to help with uh, to respond if, if there's responses necessary. So Emily, I, take us yes. through that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and bring um, all attendees into the meeting and uh, that will automatically, I believe, unmute everyone. So it'll be sort of on the attendees end. If you want to be muted, mute yourself. Um, so I'm going to work on that right now. Okay, again, a reminder that you might have just been unmuted. Um, so if you don't, uh, there is some audio feedback. So I might go in and mute you if that's the case. Yeah, and then if there's a participants panel, um, if you're not seeing that, I think you can click the button in the lower right that says participants and you should be able to see that. Um, and I think you can raise your hand in the participants panel. So you should see a little you know, raise your hand symbol. Um, and you can click that if you'd like to make a comment or ask a question. I'd like to ask a question. Yeah, go, go ahead. Hi, this is uh, Rob Medina. I'm a resident at Village at Mountain Ridge. And uh, um, it's more of a comment that, than a question, I think. Okay. Um, and it's more uh, on a macro level. And it really has to do with traffic in Golden, specifically 93 through North Golden. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if uh, anybody on council, or I know Bill Fisher lives in that area, obviously, but beyond that, people on council or even staff, if you don't live in this area and see what's going on on 93 every day, um, I'm not sure I feel like it's a priority. And I think people in this neighborhood feel the same that, uh, you know, there are, you know, we did uh, the improvement on 19th and 6th. There's going to be more improvement farther on 6th by the county development. But in North Golden, you know, we have a golden plan. But the problem with the golden plan is it's just too pie in the sky. It's way too expensive. And there is no real opportunity to really make that happen because of the grandiose design of it, basically. So that being said, um, I, I, you know, all these wonderful ideas in the land acquisition and, and some of these amenities for the city all sound great. However, when you start talking about 
retail development, office development, an amphitheater. You know, people in this neighbor are going to get real nervous um, because they've seen some of the development that's happened here in the last few years and what it's done to Highway 93. And in morning hour and morning rush hour and afternoon rush hour, I mean, it's, it's a bear. It's dangerous. It's just a bad situation. So my comment, I guess, within that context is I, I think the city has to be real careful about attracting more people to Golden. Because we, quite frankly, at some level, especially on 93, we don't have the infrastructure to handle it. We just don't. And the people on the north end here are, you know, to coin a phrase, we're just getting killed by traffic, by noise, by air pollution. I know the air quality is terrible here because of the stop and go at the stoplights. And I'm sure you have those numbers, but, you know, last time I looked at them, they were terrible and traffic is worse now. So that, that's really my comment is to say, you know, let's put the horse before the cart and be careful about what we wish for. Because quite frankly, I, you know, personally speaking, and I think I speak for people here at some level again, you know, we just don't have the, the road infrastructure to handle it. Thanks for that, Robert. Um, yeah, I, one, one thing that I would point out is just in the, the primary concept for part of Golden, sort of the civic corridor along the creek, um, that's primarily moving. I mean, there's an expansion of the library, for instance, um, expansion of the fire department with having maybe, you know, a small, I don't know, museum kind of component or something in a foyer or something. Uh, but generally that's moving things around that already exist in the community. But you're absolutely right in terms of um, particularly those partnership opportunities that were identified, really thinking about what are the implications of the types of uses that would come in there uh, from a parking standpoint, from a you know, traffic standpoint, like you're talking about locally, as well as uh, some of those regional connectors. So yeah, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, Emily, I'm not trying to do your job for you, but it looks like Mitchell and Elizabeth have their hand up. So if you guys are able to unmute yourself, go ahead and you can speak up. Hi, thank you so much. Um, we just really loved the concept to um, where you had the amphitheater further east. And one thing that I thought all of Golden might appreciate about that is that then if you had a larger music um, sensation arrive, for example, you would have overflow into a beautiful open space that would be further, you know, just west of that. Also, mm -hmm. you're walking from the, um, for that music venue, it would be much easier for folks to park in that parking garage and get right to it. Um, just a track, you know, pedestrian traffic flow might be better that way. It also then wouldn't be on top of three houses and closer to the, all the neighborhood folks across 10th Street as well. Just gotcha. from, I think the music is going to bounce right off the creek and cores the way you have it facing. Um, okay. So just some thoughts. And then Mitch had a great idea, totally separate. Go yeah, ahead. I've done. Um, so my thought was um, where you have 10th Street and East Street right there, um, so 10th and East, you have the crossing there, the bike, walk, bike path crossing. Um, I thought it'd be good if it went underneath just to stop it. When you make that end of town really busy, the east end of town, People are still coming off the bike path and walking back and forth across that road. If you rerouted it underneath 10th Street, just like it is in town, how it goes under Ford Street and under Washington Street, I think that'd be a good flow just to help traffic because it's gonna get busier on 10th Street. And same, if you look at rush hour, that road, that road is busy already. So just living right there and knowing, you know, what goes on in that corner. So. Yeah, so those are great ideas. Thank you both, I appreciate that. Thank you. And yeah, so just, uh, Elizabeth, I guess one final thing, just to recap. So you like the amphitheater on the east end, but you'd go even further east and play with the orientation. A little bit. Just yeah. swap the amphitheater with the open space. And also, guys, I think you're going to have an issue if you tuck the open space behind the theater with people camping, um, people, yeah, people so publicly. about visibility and kind of eyes on the park. Yeah, I think that might be an issue yeah. next to okay. a parking garage. Great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate sure. That.
Um, um, and Shay, I just wanted to lift up a question I saw from uh, Michelle who asked, how is this going to fit in with the city's strategic goals and the upcoming READY study? Um, and so if folks aren't aware, that's the uh, racial equity, diversity and inclusion study that the city is working on. Um, Carly, would this maybe be something that the, the, you'd like to touch on? Sure. Um, so I know that we've heard that there are definitely pieces that people might like to see incorporated with the plan, such as recognizing indigenous peoples um, through maybe that's the public art displays or various ways. So I know that that's one thing that's come up um, several times. The READY project is looking at really an action plan and creating a plan for the city to achieve those outcomes and incorporate a lot of those um, recommendations into city practices. So I definitely see there being ties throughout um, the continuation of this project as it moves into the future and that plan um, being central to the city moving forward as well. Right, and then I think Donna, you have your hand up if you'd like to unmute. Thank you. Hi, Donna Walker, Executive Director for Jefferson County Public Library. Just wanted to, I um, uh, heard the questions about the why a larger library and just wanted to let everyone know that we're li just listening um, and we're eager to be part of the conversation. And when uh, back in March of 2020, that was some of what the community said was, uh, that the library felt small to them. So that's where this is being drawn into this draft. And it's really helpful for us to hear the, the questions about the why and the cost. And uh, and we're listening and we'll, we'll be there next week to hear more. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Donna. I'm not seeing any new hands up, but if anyone is maybe Maybe you can see the unmute and not the hand, the raise hand button. Feel free to unmute and speak up as well. Cindy Haxel here. I um, want to second the concern about pedestrian traffic. Uh, I see so many people almost get hit even now along Washington. Um, so that's something that we really have to handle that and parking. Um, but the, I basically just have a question regarding the phase two um, partnership projects. Um, what, what are you looking for for time frame um, on that? Is this something that's years out? Is this something that's just a year or two? I mean, it's, it's phase two. So how, how long are the phases, I guess, is a more specific question. Uh, Carla, do you want to take that? Sure. So um, in this case, we're using phase two to describe the next phase of conversation about what those uses might look like. Um, as far as timeline, determining when that would be decided, what that would look like, we don't know exactly. We don't have answers to that. That's not um, completely set in stone, I would say. I think the reason why it's phase two is just this idea of um, having this conversation about those corridor uses that we know about right now. And then after this heart of golden conversation, looking towards those phase two opportunities and having a discussion with the community about what those might look like. So that's um, how we see it right now. It doesn't necessarily mean phase two development or design or construction or any of those things. Um, right now, it just means phase two conversation. Thank you. Yeah. So, so multiple years out, most likely, I think, is the soonest. <laughs> um, I saw a physical hand raised from Len. Yeah. It's and actually Lisa. Lisa. Yeah. You know, he, he's Lisa. Disavowing Lisa's him. hand, Len's on the screen. That's right. <laughs> um, I, I, first of all, this is, it's been exciting since you guys started doing all of this several years ago and it's still exciting so thank you it's really like you said ice rink and i was like hmm. i mean it's cool it's just there's a lot of cool stuff that that you all are thinking of so thank you for that and i wanted to i know you mentioned a few things that i think that you've been able to change over the last couple of years be, 
you know, some things because of our purchase of Meyer of the Meyer building. Um, and, and I'm wondering also, I know Kim is on the call too. I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Kim, but I mean, I, is there, is there stuff happening with the, the course tech project, which I think is also really exciting that, um, that can kind of work can complement all of this stuff. And, you know, there are a lot of people talking about affordable housing, but I know that that's part of what they're talking about with the course tech project. So maybe that can alleviate some of, I, I don't, I, I, are you all talking together and maybe you already are and that's a given, but is that already be affecting what you're thinking of moving forward? Yeah, yeah, I mentioned the coordination that's happening. Um, and if Carly or Kim wanna speak up, they can as well. But yeah, the, the idea would be to make sure that we're, you know, it's two pretty big transformative projects. So there's kind of two things we want to have happen. Um, one is make sure we're not missing anything. <laughs> um, you know, if, if the, this pro public and private investment is going to occur over the next, you know, 15 years or so, whatever that takes to kind of implement all this, um, you know, we want to make sure we're not kind of leaving any gaps, but then also avoiding, you know, unnecessary overlap. Um, you know, you mentioned the ice rink. Well, we probably only need one ice rink on this area, right? So, um, so we don't want two of those. Just as a yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you want multiple three, three ice rinks. Okay. Um, but Carly or Kim, anything that you guys would add to that, or would like to add to that? No, Kim. Um, I can just add. Thank you for saying that, Lisa. This is Kim Mangle. Um, yeah, we our teams are definitely in contact, and I would just say that there are many, many more opportunities for engagement. Um, not only in the next month, but ongoing uh, as these projects evolve. But I know that more information will be posted very soon on Guiding Golden about some community engagement specific for the course tech project. So I just encourage people to continue to get involved and, um, you know, provide input in these conversations. But we are definitely uh, in close communication and coordination. Awesome. Thank you for the question, Lisa. Um, Jay, I got, a, I got a question from the chat. Yeah, go for it. Um, lifting up a question that came in from Michelle, um, so really should be talking about all of this um, when it at, with regards to costs. Um, she asked, "What are the trade offs and what time frame uh, we're considering?" Yeah, so I think the costs and the time frame are the stuff that we do need to drill down into and we plan to have more of those conversations. Right now, we're really focused on kind of this overall plan and what this might look like and what the community wants to see. And then working towards, because there are different funding mechanisms and different ways that we might um, look at funding this project and look at phasing the project um, and the timeline and the phasing being something that could depend on various scenarios that play out. So I think what we heard from city council also the last time that we went to city council to present these um, ideas was that they'd really like to move towards what a, the final plan looks like and then start really drilling down and focusing on funding and what that means for the community and what that could look like. So right now that's how we're approaching it. We do have, um, as MIG said, they're, the subcontractor really looks at more of that costing piece and um, getting more of those um, architectural estimates of what the building would cost and what some of the that stuff would be. So we are gathering some of that info and talk, thinking through what phasing could look like and plan to have those community conversations um, you know, as early as the next few months and throughout the next year to whatever that may look like. Right. Thanks, Carly. Um, Loretta, I think you have your hand up if you want to unmute. Yes, and, and I think the, the timing is good. So what I think I just heard Carly say is pick a plan and then we'll just figure out how much it costs. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think that's I, exactly right. I think the idea is to confirm the direction from the last two and a half years, uh, which is you know, been in fits and starts, um, and then do that 
detailed analysis. And I don't think it's just a matter of, oh, well, this is the price, so we'll figure out how to pay for it. I think there's still a community conversation around some of those trade-offs if certain aspects are, you know, unbearable, you know, from a cost perspective. And, and so I guess that's part of my question, because when we were doing this work in fits and starts over the last couple of years, one mm -hmm. of the comments that stuck with me um, for the last at least two years, I think, is that people are being encouraged to just think big, don't worry about costs, because we're just brainstorming right now. And so it feels like we were told as a community two years ago, just brainstorm. And now we're being told, okay, this is what you brainstormed. So we'll, back to your point, it still sounds like it's just brainstorm and then we'll figure out how to pay for it. And one of those examples is, um, again, that stuck with me, is we asked organizations, do you need more space? And Every single organization said yes, because what organization have you ever asked, would it be nice to have more space? And they said, oh no, please please reduce the amount of, of floor space and office space and storage space that we have. So I'm a little concerned that, that we are ignoring cost. I'd love to do that in my personal life and, and do everything to my house that I've ever wanted, but but that's just not reality. Yeah, um, I, I appreciate the comment, Loretta. I absolutely do. Um, we just need something to to price. Um, so I think we're getting confirmation from the community to you, to your point. Or did we hear you right over the last two and a half years? And then we'll move into that costing conversation. And again, there can be refinements, um, elimination of pieces, um, you know, efficiencies created um, based on that. Uh, but but you're right about where we are in the process. I think that's a fair characterization. Follow up to kind of where that starting program began. It, I mean, it really did begin with a very detailed space needs analysis of all the civic uses and how they're currently being used, what the sizes, what the configurations are, um, noting that there might be ways to optimize those or based on you know different changes in kind of land ownership, maybe ways for the city to very economically um, kind of savvy, think about ways to uh, very uh, intentionally to deliver on new needs or identified needs that the community has brought that they've identified through a very technical analysis while still doing so in a very financially prudent way. I mean, all to Jay's point, great questions and certainly something that we'll be drilling into moving forward. Thanks, Mark. Uh, William, you have your hand up. William Rice. Hi, and this is Heather. Um, uh, it's both Bill and I. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, Heather. Hi. Uh, thanks for having us all on here and having a, an online session. This is really great. Really appreciate it. Um, I just wanted to comment on a few things or, or sort of ditto. I guess you've seen me say ditto already in some of the comments. Um, what some of the other people have already said, I think it was maybe Rob who first spoke about uh, concerns about traffic and the number of, of people um, coming to Golden. It seems like we already have uh, an issue in terms of the summer use and trying to manage the crowds along the creek. And I yeah. really want to make sure that we're thinking through how we would manage the crowds that are attracted to all of the facilities that are laid out in this plan and potential new facilities. And so, for example, the ice skating rink, which initially I thought, oh, that's a great idea. Um, my second thought was, wait a minute, that could make the area as crowded in the winter as it is in the summer and have we thought about how to manage that so I, I really think it's important that the city in, in moving forward with this plan think seriously about how all of these people are going to be managed we're drawing more and more people in and it's not just traffic uh, vehicle traffic it's also you know pedestrian traffic and it really changes an experience um, so that's one thing I just thought you know I, I hope that everybody's thinking about that also um, I think it was um, shoot the, the young couple who spoke about the amphitheater. I just wanted to say yes, excellent, excellent comments both of you had uh, on every item you spoke to. So I wanted to just um, you know give a thumbs up to what they said. Uh, and then the the woman most recently who spoke about costs, I, I agree with her. I thought that um, the way Carly spoke about it, it did sound like the plan came first and then the costs were thought out later. So given that that's not the way it's going to go and I think it was Jay who, who gave more details about how cost considerations are going to be brought in 
I think it would be helpful to put that in the front of your message every time that that we haven't that this isn't here's how the plan works once we get it finalized we're going to go do everything that that we really do have to consider costs and the trade-offs are going to have to be made um, and so we might not get everything that we've laid out here so that people's expectations um, are not turned up really high uh, I remember on the Washington Street project we were led through a process very similar in a similar manner with all kinds of you know we had the ability to add anything we wanted and at the end I remember a planner I don't remember which one saying oh you guys just have expensive taste we can't do all of this and I was very frustrated with that because they had led us down that road um, if we have parameters in terms of costs those parameters should be made clear up front um, so I think I think cost is a really important question and I think it needs to be brought to the forefront a little bit more um, so those are my comments, um, but again, thank you for having us here. I really, I like the interaction here online. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Heather. Uh, great comments. Uh, we noted those. Um, Emily, checking in with you. Are there any questions in the chat? I haven't seen any new questions in the chat. Okay. Um, and then I'm not sure if it's new comments and questions or if the hands are just still raised, it, it, I haven't used this platform that much, so you might have to lower your hand, but just want to check with Rob as well as Mitchell and Elizabeth, whose hands are, I can't tell if they're still up or up again. Um, so just if you wanted to speak up, you can. Rob? I'm so sorry, this is new. Oh, you're Hi, this is, Rob, this is Rob again. Hey, I just, you know, I was having a conversation with Jamie Sheridan, another resident here today, and that was our second concern was the cost here and the money involved in this thing. So, you know, I, I don't know the numbers inside and out in terms of the budget, and you guys probably understand that a lot more, but, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in there. There's a lot of expensive infrastructure here that's, you know, ex very expensive. Um, and again, it's all relative to, I think, you know, the road and 93 and the cost to improve that. And, and is there an opportunity cost if we, you know, if we develop this down by the creek, does that mean we can't do other things? There's always an opportunity cost because if you do one thing, you can't do something else. But uh, again, I just go back to, you know, really, are we putting money into the right thing? You know, does it make sense to have all this focus on, on certain aspects of this of this development when you know we just have a road that's, you know, that's in 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 real big need of of expansion and improvement. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. Um, so I think, yeah, I'm just scanning again. I'm not seeing any additional hands up. Um, gonna, gonna give another opportunity in case maybe you're not navigating the platform, um, especially while I can't find that raise hand function. If you wanted to unmute using the button at the bottom and ask a question, you can do that. I saw one additional question in the chat from Michelle okay. um, <clears throat> asking about if we're going to further diversify public engagement. Uh, I feel like there's a large portion of the community that doesn't engage with Golden's conventional outreach options. Their opinions also count, especially for such a huge costly project. And Michelle, I completely agree. Um, for folks I haven't gotten to meet in the community yet, um, I'm Emily Gideon, I'm the relatively new community engagement and comms manager. And so we're you know, actively trying to find, uh, you know, more ways to reach uh, more people in the community, making um, our uh, surveys and, you know, other online options a lot more accessible and uh, finding ways to, to meet people um, where they are so we can get their feedback. So, uh, Michelle, that's definitely part of our plan on this. We'll um, be doing a lot of concerted outreach on social media once we have all of these new materials um, up on Guiding Golden. Um, but uh, thank you for uh, bringing, lifting up that point. Yeah, that's great. And earlier in the process, um, just as an example, in addition to the online pieces, which um, I think the, the comment or the question was sort of raising as well, like um, if people aren't looking for those opportunities, um, you know, they, they may not have an, or they may not weigh in. Um, so we actually did some focus groups trying to reach out to some, you know, 
this is a maybe a poor use of or poor choice of words, but unusual suspects, right? We kind of talk about people who typically engage in a process like this and trying to get some people who are less engaged typically or don't engage. So yeah, awesome that Emily's on board and we'll be helping with that moving forward. Um, yeah, just one more last call to see if there's other folks who wanted to, I see, I don't know if this is a new hand, William, or if yours is still up, uh, William Rice. No, this is Heather again. It's oh, hey, Heather. <laughs> I don't want, it does, is there anyone else who needs to speak? I don't want to take somebody else. I think, no, I think the floor is yours and then okay. we'll probably I'll make it, some next steps. I'll make it quick then. Um, the one thing that I think would be helpful if uh, in future presentations, and and um, printouts of this plan is sort of the why behind some of these um, decisions. So as an example, with the library, if the library needs to expand and the space isn't adequate for an expansion, that would be an example of why you would suggest moving it to another location. Um, but some of those whys, I think, are really helpful for us to know so we can make comments that make sense um, and have some, are informed. So I would recommend that in, in a future presentation, you add a little bit more of that into the presentation up front. Yeah, that's great. So not just describing kind of where things are kind of landing in this uh, concept, but but some of the decisions or rationale for why they're moving yeah. there. So yeah. Maybe the parameters you were working within, things like that. Yeah, yeah. no, that's great. Well, Thanks, definitely, I'm, that's a really good comment to kind of begin to wrap on at least um, tonight, because we will have a, and Mark will speak to this in a second, but there's going to be a meeting um, next week uh, where we can take that into consideration and incorporate a little bit more of that. So thank you, Heather. Um, I'm just doing one more quick scan here. I don't, I'm going to ensure we're not missing anyone. I don't see anyone. Emily, are you seeing anyone in the chat? No, no uh, nothing new. All right, so Mark, I think it's back to you and then maybe Carly for some final words. Yeah, thanks so much. And as, as Jay was mentioning, uh, Heather, specifically in response to your most recent comment there about that summary piece, I did kind of blow through about two years of, of decision making in a relatively short period. And it was a kind of a toss of the coin as to how much we wanted to uh, give the history lesson on time, but it's important, right? There is a lot of decision points through the process that prior presentations covered that we didn't you know, pull back forward. So as we start this conversation again, you're absolutely right. We need to make sure that 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 makes a lot of sense uh, throughout the way. And, you know, the, uh, you know, the hundreds of folks that have, have provided their opinions in the, in the process and why we made decisions based on, you know, where we we're at at the time. Um, moving forward, as Jay mentioned, uh, this information, activities around it, the types of input we're soliciting this evening is going to be available through Guiding Golden moving forward. We're going to be moving towards an in-person uh, event at 530 next Wednesday at City Hall. Uh, during that, we will uh, certainly expand upon the front end of that presentation. Initially, we're going to do a shorter version. We're going to do probably a longer version of that front end to talk through the decision making process as it relates to um, what space needs analysis, slight refinements to building locations and things of that nature. But we want to make sure that, you know, for those uh, folks who, you know, historically have engaged in person and may not be comfortable engaging online, we're reaching those individuals as well. Um, but that particular event, we're hoping to drill down a bit more into some of the details around uh, the design thinking and, and kind of confirm that, that vision, knowing that we need to couch that in reality, right? Things cost money. <laughs> And uh, we want to make sure that as we move towards that vision and that complete vision for what this area can be like for the next generation, that we're thinking so in a very pragmatic way. So uh, if you all are available, please do come on by, say hey to Jay and I uh, in person, uh, if, if you're comfortable to do so. Uh, and Carly, she'll be there, probably Emily too, maybe Steve, um, next Wednesday at 5.30. And then from there, taking all that input that we've heard from all tonight from that group, uh, and the community through Guiding Golden and, and really starting to, uh, you know, synthesize that to figure out where appropriate to tweak and what we need to, you know, refine moving forward. Uh, with that, I'll hand it to you, Carly, maybe for any closing thoughts. Just want to thank everybody for taking the time to participate on this meeting and um, participate in the future uh, Guiding Golden exercises and the in-person meeting. I know your time is valuable and we just really appreciate your engagement on these projects and your thoughtful input. So thank you so much. Thank you everyone. I hope you have a great night. Thank you everyone. Good night.